The following video shares the steps of processing a broiler chicken from start to finish. Viewer discretion is advised. Scald needs to be at 145 to 150 for about 45 seconds. Just make sure I dunk them around to make sure that the water gets through all the feathers really well. Swirl them around. When they're done scalding, you'll know because when you pull one out and the large wing feather pulls out easily, they're ready. Not quite ready yet on this one. Here we go. Ready. Ready for the pluck. All right, here's how to remove the feet. I like the bird laying towards me with his feet towards me. And then I just hyperextend that hock joint in between the two large processes right in the middle of that joint. Just slice through it until you get the joint to pop open. And then from the back side, cut the skin. Same thing on the other one. how you remove the feet. All right, now we're ready for evisceration. Here's how to take the head and neck off. I will just cut the skin and this part. I'm removing the crop. The crop is on the right side of the bird here. And if you fasted your bird for 24 hours, it'll be empty. If they're on pasture, there may be a little bit of grass in it, but I just isolate the crop from the rest of the body. Cut some of this connective tissue and just pull the crop out discard that. That's the crop. Okay, now to remove the neck, we'll just pull back some of the skin and connective tissue and cut the muscle along the back of the neck and then either side of the neck. And then give it a pop and the vertebrae will separate and then I can cut the, the meat, the muscle on the interior side. This is the trachea. You just want to cut that as close to the body as possible and give everything a pull and that will separate your head and neck from the rest of the body. I don't save the necks. Some people save them and put them in a stock pot, but I don't. Okay, to eviscerate, flip the bird over tail facing me. This is the uropigial gland. You'll want to be cautious of that. That's the preening gland, uh, also called um, the oil gland. So there is oil in there. If you um, accidentally push it a certain way, it'll excrete some yellow oil. So be mindful of that. So I don't leave the tails. Some chefs will, or chefs, some some chefs do like the tails on, and some people will uh, cut around here to remove the rectum and all the and eviscerate the animal. But I don't leave the tails. So I just make a cut right here at the base of the tail in between two vertebrae. It's kind of like playing a violin until I. Get right between two vertebrae and then go down either side of the tail. Stay real shallow with your cuts just until you're through the muscle on either side. You see it kind of pop loose there. Then I flip the bird over, stand it on its head, or what was its head. That'll allow all your intestines to fall down, let gravity help you. And then you can see I'm just holding the skin here, making a tent. Here's the rectum. I'm going to go just beyond that and be mindful where your fingers are and just make a stabbing cut all the way through and up. And then you've got a little hole there um, and that's your abdominal contents in there. You're into the abdominal cavity so I'll take my index finger here and punch through. Be mindful of where your finger is and use your knife just to go right next to your finger and out. Okay, And then do the same thing with the other side. Punch through and go out and now you've got your rectum and you see the intestines starting to come out there and then I hold on to that with my left hand and then with my right hand I reach in and reach up as high as you can and 
and just remove a little bit of connective tissue to get up in there. Reach up as high as you can and grab as much of the abdominal contents as you can. Heart, liver, lungs. A lot of times the lungs won't come out in this first grab, but I grab the heart and just give it all a, a good pull. And pull it on out. There we go. A little bit of abdominal fluid in this bird. You have the beginnings of some, uh, he's got just a tiny bit of fluid around his heart, so he was the beginning of congestive heart failure if he had gone on. These birds are eight weeks old, so they really went long for us. It's nice big birds today. Clean up a little bit of these wing feathers here. All right, here's our abdominal contents. A lung. Uh, looks like the other lung is still in there. Go back in. They live right next to the rib cage towards the back. I don't feel it. Oh, there it is. Nope, part of the liver. Here's the other lung right here. Two lungs, a heart, liver, looks healthy, gizzard, intestinal tract. Here's the rectum and the tail. So a lot of people will save the gizzard, the liver, and the heart. If you're gonna save the liver, be mindful of the gallbladder. That's this green structure right here. If you happen to rupture that, it'll stain your meat. Um, green as well as give it a very bitter inedible flavor to it um, Your meat is tainted if you rupture the gallbladder, so be very mindful of that when you're eviscerating your birds um, But many people will save these organs. I don't um, We just compost it so but you can so that's how you eviscerate your broilers All right final step after evisceration is given the carcass an entire a good rinse inside and out and then we're going to put it in a nice bath so we have our water tested we just use a um, this well has been tested for coliform every year so we're uh, perfectly safe to use it on our on our meat we also uh, use it to wash our eggs so you might not necessarily have to do that if you're not selling it we just add a we we, we like that peace of mind knowing that it's our well's been tested so we just use a garden hose and give it a good rinse with a high pressure uh, spray. Once it's rinsed, I just give it a once over for any little feathers. We can also go through it, go th over the carcass again um, before we package, but this one looks like it cleaned up pretty well. So now we go into the ice bath. Use a big Coleman cooler, one of those five day coolers with ice and water, and we let them chill until their carcasses are about 40 degrees, and then we can go on to packaging. This is Marie with Meyer Hatchery. We hope that you found this video on how to process Cornish Cross broilers super helpful. If you're preparing to do your own broilers on your homestead, Make sure you shop at MeyerHatchery.com for your processing supplies. We'll have a link in the show notes to that category on the website. And also, don't forget to like this video and click the subscribe button to get more great content from Meyer Hatchery. Thanks for watching!